Okay, final thoughts time for the Manhattan Project and the Manhattan Project second stage. Hi, everybody. Okay, well, let's see here. Uh, first of all, just get this out of the way really quick. If you like the Manhattan Project at all, if you enjoy this game, you should definitely seek this out. I, it, there's just no choice about it. I mean, this, I think, very quickly becomes one of those expansions that you never play the game without having the expansion in it. Everything that's good about this game, and there's a lot that's good about this game, is improved with this. The uh, you know the additional uh, powers from you know these people you know and actually you know the historical information is really really interesting too, and but just having them in the game you know and, and the this game is already so much about timing, but that's just amplified by having to pay attention to the timing, be able to get the right guy at the right time so you can maximize his use. Also, having more nations is awesome. I mean, the, the promos are great, and the additional nations here, I mean, there's some really neat, clever things that, uh, that these nations do. Uh, you know, they aren't just, you know, repeats of what the cards do. I mean, you know, like, that, like that, that North Korea thing is just brilliant. It's so thematically appropriate that they kind of hold the world hostage um, to stop them from getting cheap plutonium. I mean, just really, really clever stuff. Really like it a lot. And so if you have Manhattan Project, you should seek this out. Manhattan Project, as everybody knows, is great without it. But, oh, and actually I forgot, this uh, it comes with another thing. I didn't even demo this, because Jen and I would never use this in a million years. The rockets. You have an additional uh, technology, for lack of a better term, that you could be pursuing and increasing and improving, which is rockets. And rockets are basically the exact same thing as bombers, except that they cannot be blocked by fighters. So if you have a lot of rockets, you could be raining death down on all your opponents, and it's very difficult for them to fight back. So that, that comes in as well. Oh, another thing, um, I didn't mention it, you know, I, I, I demoed one airstrike in this game. By default, uh, people know there are two airstrike spots on the board. It comes with this that's a, that says, if you want to have a less interactive game or you know, a less confrontational game, put this down so there's only one airstrike spot on the board. Or for more confrontation, put this down so there's three airstrikes. So you can basically be you know, destroying each other left, right, and center nonstop. And so I, I should have mentioned that's also part of this expansion. You know, obviously, anybody can do it themselves. They can just pretend there's three spaces here, but it's a nice little touch. And that's all I got to say about the, this. If you like the game, seek this out, get it. It's well worth it. It just adds so much to the game and makes it much more rich and fun. Now, done about that, let's just talk about the core game and how we feel about that. Now, this is a great game, make no mistake about it. Um, you know, the worker placement is so clever and so fresh. And hopefully I did a halfway decent job of demonstrating, you know, because basically what this game is, I don't know if anybody's ever talked about it, this game basically has taken the worker placement mechanics of Lahav and, you know, you know, turned it to 11, basically. Because in Lahav, you just have one worker, but you put him in a building, and then no one else can use that building until you kick him out. This is the exact same thing here, except instead of one worker, you have anywhere from four to 16 workers that you're spreading all over the place and blocking all kinds of stuff. Your buildings, your opponent's buildings, the buildings on the board, and it's just really, really brilliant. I mean, you know, you always want to do one more thing, but when, you, when you're really clicking and you've got that timing down where I'm putting all these guys out and then I'm bringing them all back and then I'm putting them over here and then I'm bringing them all back, it just feels great. And you know, even though towards the end of the game, you know, things skyrocket in price. I mean, these bombs are so expensive to make to score these points. Your, your, your speed and efficiency, if you've set up a good collection of buildings, you know, it, it, you know increases at pace and it's just very, very satisfying to pull all that stuff off. So there's a lot to love here. Really, really clever. A really big breath of fresh air. A really new way to make worker placement feel new and different and not the same old. So that's a great major accomplishment by Mr. Brandon Tibbetts. My hat's off to you, sir. Now, uh, that's great. Let me complain about some stuff too. Although these are very personal complaints and um, you know maybe they will affect you, maybe they won't. The, the, only issue Jen and I have with this game is, and I wish it wasn't the case, this game is mean. This game is is dirty, rotten, scoundrel fighting from the get-go. A big, big part of this game is, you know, doing the air superiority thing and doing the airstrikes and destroying your opponent's um, buildings because, you know, if you, if you find that they're doing much better than you, 
blow up their buildings. That will slow them down. Um, if you know there's one person who's doing really, really well, everybody freaks out. Oh, another interesting thing too. Before you actually send over fighters, you have the option, the rules very specifically state this, you have the option to enter negotiations with players where you can say, well, you know what? I'm gonna blow up five of your factories. Give me five bucks. Just do it right now and I won't do it. And you can literally hold people ransom and the rules are very specific about how you do that, what the timing is of this kind of negotiation and what the rules are because you know you, you, can't, you can't renege on it. The rules specifically allow for negotiation and you have to follow through. So I mean that's great, it's really wonderful and thematic but God it's mean. And you know even the espionage is just mean. There are so many times you're just like oh, sorry I gotta, I gotta go to your mind. And now I can take some solace in the fact that when I know Jen is going to block my mind and get the three yellow cake that I desperately needed this turn, at least I take solace in the fact that I know it was much more expensive for her than it should have been. Because she has to pay three bucks and an extra worker, or in the case of her Soviet Union special power, um, two additional workers. So it's, it's not like it's an efficient move for her. But, you know, by paying that extra, she's blocking me. So it probably comes out in the wash, and she does very well. And I mean, that can just be really, really painful. It's nice having this guy that can block all espionage, but you can't hold on to him forever. And it's really interesting that these two guys basically just cancel each other out. I mean, in a two-player game, if I grab this guy, Jen's going to grab this guy. Still, we don't mind the espionage that much, because like I said, it, it kind of evens out. You know, it's expensive to do it. And um, you know, if, if if my key piece of if my key building was taken, chances are I can do something else to mitigate that. I, I can work around that. But the attacking and the you know destroying the wonderful engine that your opponent has created, well, I'm sure for some people it's very very satisfying and very fun. For us, it's it's unthinkable. In fact, the last game we played, we got we were right up to the end. We both needed to build one more bomb. And um, I knew Jen was going to be able to do it on her turn. I couldn't do it on my turn. I was going to do it on my next turn. So all I had to do to win the game was just bomb the factory that Jen needed. Or, you know, the, the building that Jen needed. If I had bombed it, and I could have, I could have easily done it. Because uh, I, you know, I didn't need the five points from the bomber. That's why I had a bomber. I could have easily done it. And I would have guaranteed one. And I couldn't do it. I just wouldn't do it. I would sooner lose than literally punch my wife in the face like that. Because that's how it feels to us. Because we are, I mean, as I've talked about in other videos, we are pussycats. We are softies. And, and that's just too bad that such a big part of the game is this portion that we will forever ignore. I mean, we're never going to play with these rockets. They're pointless to us. And jet fighters are useless. And, and it's a real shame because, you know, there's this whole portion of the board. That obviously, the game is designed with this in mind. And by ignoring it, we're ignoring you know, kind of the balance of the game. Now, that's, that, that said, it's okay. We enjoy the game regardless. We just enter a unilateral, unbreakable, you know, truce at the beginning of the game where we will never attack each other's zones. Um, which means we also never build planes. We always just turn in and get money instead of planes. Um, and although, you know, obviously they're still used to build bombers. And, um, you know, but, you know, because then you can pay five bucks to get additional points if you can load your bombs onto bombers. And like I said, that's about, you know, we would never bomb each other. So, it, it, you know, the game is okay. If you're a peacenik, you can get around it. But still, I have to admit, I was a bit disappointed. One of the reasons I was so excited about this expansion, we had ignored this game originally. We'd completely passed on it because of the airstrikes, because of the meanness factor. We just didn't care, didn't want to get into it. Eventually got my copy of it anyway, and I was really excited because I'd heard that this kind of really softened the meanness. And I was like, oh, great, okay, open up the box, read the rules, and what is it? Oh, there's just one airstrike space instead of two. That does not soften the meanness. If anything, that makes it worse because, hey, hey, only I can airstrike you and you can't airstrike back. It just makes it worse. And I'm so bummed that this wasn't something to, oh, I put this down and instead of an airstrike here, there's, I don't know, probably a weapons um, bazaar, you know, where I can go and I could sell all those jets I've been stockpiling to make money. You know, it becomes, it becomes another income revenue or even a victory point thing where every three jets I sell is worth one point. That would make it worthwhile. Um, it would, 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 would make us feel better about, you know, this whole portion of the game that we largely ignore. But they didn't opt to do that. They, they, they kept the mean spirit. And that's okay. Jen and I just ignore that part and we have a great time because this game is too good not to be played. Fantastic. One of the best games of last year, easily. Uh, made it into my top 20 after I, after I finally played it. I think. I think it did. 
It might not have because of the mean factor and because it feels like, hey, there's just a big portion of what we could be doing in this game that's just lost to us. But it still plays regardless. So if you are like me and Jen and you have also avoided this game because of the mean factor, you don't necessarily have to because you can ignore it and you don't and you only feel like you're kind of missing maybe 10% of the game but still the rest of the game is so good it's worth it you can also take um, you know, if you get the expansion, or I, I don't think this came in the expansion, I think this was a promo card. Yeah, it was a Nation of the World. Take Soviet Union out. So there are no free, um, what do you call it? Uh, espionages. And while well, you're at it, take out the free espionage and the anti espionage guys. So the only way to espionage is to pay big money. Because you know, if, I, if my opponent is espionaging me, but it costs them a lot, I don't mind as much. So uh, anyway, I guess those are our final thoughts. Great, great game. Oh, another thing, uh, actually, another thing that I have to admit, I was, I was personally not put off, but I did actually avoid getting this game for a while, because I knew Jen would not like the subject matter, and she doesn't. She does not care for it. I mean, you know, she appreciates it, it's kind of tongue-in-cheek, and, um, you know, because of the, the cute little meeple um, images, and, uh, you know, and once she gets into it, it's okay, because it's just so much fun to play, but... The first couple times we tried to play it, Jen made a, a conscious decision to say, no, I don't make bombs, we're making wedding cakes. This is a game of dueling wedding cake companies. And you know, instead of you know, bomb detonation tests, we were doing taster tests and stuff like that because she just was so uncomfortable. And you know, instead of plutonium and uranium, it was, I mean, well, it was literally yellow cake, but it was frosting and, and, you know, and the H-bombs were actually like the little, uh, the bride and groom things you put up on top of the cake. It was like the ultimate upgrade. And you know, so we were doing all that because she's just so uncomfortable with the subject matter. That said, she got used to it, she got over it. The game is fun enough to where, you know, by the end of it, you know, now she's like, okay, well, I guess I need five more plutonium so I can build that H-bomb and, you know, blah, blah, blah. So she's comfortable, um, not deploying the ND to build the H-bomb. So, you know, you also might be put off by that subject matter, but I can, I can at least say in our case, Jen came to terms with it, got used to it, and it was so much fun in the end, she didn't mind. Would she like the game more if it were about making wedding cakes? or something that wasn't about literally the end of the world, yes, but she still likes it a lot, as do I, even with the uh, caveats about the mean factor. And so that's why we're definitely holding on to this game. It's a fantastic game. I can only hope in the future, in future expansions, they come up with some options for us peaceniks that we can do something else with all those jets. Um, I mean, it just seems like just a no-brainer, you know, another victory point path that we can do something with our planes. Wouldn't that be great? Um, Please consider it, Brandon Tibbetts. Please, please. Okay, but anyway, that's enough. Great game, highly recommend it. Uh, hope this has been useful for you guys. And if you have any questions or comments, please let me know. I'm sure I made quite a few mistakes. I know I was playing really sloppy and not very smart, but uh, as always, I'm sure you guys will point out where I was a doofus and I will make notes in the videos. And that's it for today, folks. Thanks a lot for watching. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.